Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 1st of March and this quick look at the week beginning the 5th of March but before we get to next week events of which there are many I'm um, going to have a quick preview of the market performance over the past few days and we come off a very difficult February for global stock markets we've also seen thus far a fairly positive week for the US dollar as well as a positive month for the US dollar index, the first positive month since October last year. And we're, approach, we're approaching this very key resistance level that I've talked about in previous videos, around about the 91 level on the dollar index, around between 91 and 91.20. And that, su that suggests that uh, there is certainly some potential momentum for further dollar upside on a break above this key resistance level. And I think what's important about this particular um, this particular resistance level is the fact that the dollar has started to strengthen on the basis of a much more hawkish Fed. We've had the new Fed chair, Jerome Powell, talking up the prospects for the US economy, talking up the prospects for US rate hikes. And yet one can't help feeling that maybe Mr. Powell is getting slightly ahead of himself because what we've seen over the past few days is economic data that does appear to be showing a little bit of softness from the US economy. Now, I know that historically Q1, the first quarter in the US, tends to be a fairly weak affair. We've seen it in 2017, we saw it in 2016, and we also saw it in 2015. So it wouldn't be surprising to see some fairly weak economic data, but we're also seeing softening as well in European data, um, more broadly in the PMI numbers, as well as weaker inflation, which would appear to suggest that demand appears to be slowing down. So I think with the fact that we've got the European Central Bank rate meeting coming up next week, we've got a Bank of Canada rate meeting coming up next week, we've got US non-farm payrolls, we've also got the latest wages data. I think we're going to be paying particular attention not only to those decisions, but also to the fact that um, the central banks, what sort of what sort of outlook will the central banks be looking at in terms of their inflation expectations? Because while we're not expecting any moves on monetary policy next week, I think how those central banks guide in terms of future inflation expectations, as well as obviously the whole host of services data that we've got coming out next week, the ISM non-manufacturing data out of the US in particular. In terms of the prices paid data, what we've been seeing is we've been seeing strong economic data in terms of prices paid over the last few months coming out of the US, but we haven't really seen that start to filter down into the headline inflation numbers, even though we did see a big jump in wages in the previous payrolls to 2.9%. That's still expected to be sustained at around about those sorts of levels, and that's largely as a result of big increases in the minimum wage in the minimum wage levels for a number of US states but the big question i think for me is whether or not that can be sustained whether the narrative being pushed by Jerome Powell in his recent Humphrey Hawkins testimony really justifies the prospect that we could see four US rate rises this year and that's one of the reasons i think we've seen the dollar starting to push higher on the back of some of that particular hawkish narrative that we've been seeing Although that has been coming out of the Fed. What has been strange, however, is that US bond yields haven't been following suit. In fact, the yield curve has actually been flattening. Uh, it was around about 0.78% basis points between the 10-year and the 2-year a few weeks ago. It's now come back into 06 So there's a, there's a number of um, things going on at the moment that are completely um, moving at odds to the um, prevailing narrative at the moment. But the key level for me remains... The dollar index around about 91, which also coincides coincidentally, and I've talked about this previously, euro dollar 121.60. Now, this could be the potential for a double top reversal. We look as if we're about to break below the 50 day moving average, um, as well as that very key um, support level that I outlined earlier um, earlier in February, 121.60. It was also a Fibonacci retracement level of the entire down move from the 140 highs to the 103 lows. So that's now acting as a little bit of a support area. If we break below that, then 
we've got a potential for a double top move, 125 to 121, down to around about 119. Still keeps the overall uptrend intact, but it certainly does delay the prospect of further euro dollar gains on the basis of the fact that ultimately um, the expectation is that the ECB will dial back its asset purchase program by the end of this year. Weak inflation numbers could undermine that, as could a couple of events that are taking place this weekend. We've got the Italian elections. The likely outcome from that is going to be a hung parliament. I think really, really the big question is, is how the percentages play out. Because I think if you get a government that is probably slightly more anti-euro and anti-reform, then I think that's, that's potentially going to be particularly negative for the euro as well as the Italian stock market and stock markets more broadly. So keeping an eye on the Italian elections, but also on the latest vote from the members of the German SPD. Now, everyone's been reacting as if a new, new German government is a done deal. The SPD coalition needs to be ratified by grassroots members. If that falls apart, then ultimately we could see another election in Germany. Whichever way that vote goes, even if they vote to form a new German government with Angela Merkel, it's likely to be a very fractious affair. It's likely to be, um, I think, founded on a very thin ice, simply because the SPD is really damned if it does, and it's damned if it doesn't. They're trailing badly in the polls. If they go into coalition with Mrs. Merkel, they will probably lose an enormous amount of vote share. And yet, if they go into opposition and decide not to support Mrs. Merkel, they'll probably get wiped out in the polls anyway. There are no good options for the SPD. So I think the vote is likely to be fairly tight. But ultimately, whichever way it, whichever way it goes, it's unlikely that any new German government is likely to be a particularly strong one. So um, those, 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 two, those two factors at the weekend could actually drive the direction of the euro over the course of the next few days. But we've also got the European Central Bank rate meeting, which is due out on Thursday. Mr Draghi's press conference will be particularly interesting in that context, given the weak inflation numbers that we've seen come out from Germany, France and Italy. We did see a big jump in the Spanish numbers, but I think that's largely a one-off factor. Ultimately, headline inflation in the European Union is the lowest it's been since 12 months ago when it was around about 1.9. It's now around about 1.2%. So there's no signs of inflationary pressure there. We've also got the latest services PMI data for February from across the European Union, China, as well as the UK. We've got the latest China trade data. And we round off the week, we finish off the week with the latest non-farm payrolls US employment report, expecting a number of around 195,000, slightly down from the 200,000 that we saw in the January numbers. But more importantly, keep an eye on those wage numbers because they're at 2.9% in January. If the wage growth that markets are concerned about is going to be sustained, then we really need to see that come in in and around that 2.9% level. Um, if it comes in slightly weaker, then we could then conversely see the dollar sell off. But I'm not expecting that to moderate particularly sharply over the course of the next few months. And, um, and the pound is obviously going to be in the spotlight as well, given the disagreements currently being played out in the media between the Brussels between Brussels and the UK with respect to the Irish border. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.